In this video, I'm going to take a look inside these uh, 28 BYJ-48 5 volt DC stepper motors. Now, these are pretty common uh, and relatively inexpensive stepper motors that you can find pretty readily online. Uh, I've bought them in sets where you get each stepper motor along with the driver board uh, for as little as a few dollars a pair. So uh, again, pretty darn inexpensive here. Uh, and usually when you buy the stepper motor along with it, you'll get a little driver board. Uh, and in this case, it's got a little Toshiba ULN 2003 uh, Darlington array on it. It's got a, a place where you can connect the motor uh, right up to it there, some LEDs that show you when the different phases on the motor are firing, and then some pins here that you can use to hook it up to your microcontroller's outputs, as well as up to the voltage supply over there. So I'm not going to talk about this board anymore in this video. What I really wanted to do is sort of talk about the insides of this motor here. So I've already actually opened this motor, but all I did is grab a, a pair of pliers here and uh, just work on the four different tabs that are on the face uh, of that stepper motor there. And if you give them a good pinch and pry back, uh, you can eventually work those back. And once you do that, this face plate with the motor shaft on it auto just pull right off for you. Uh, and so, in fact, their motor shaft dropped out. Uh, but you'll see it in there like that. And you'll notice that that motor shaft has on it uh, this little plastic gear with some teeth on it. So if you look inside the stepper motor then, there's actually some gears in there. So this center shaft that comes out is the actual rotor uh, from the motor, uh, and it's actually got some teeth on it. And uh, it then intersects with this set of gears, and then that set of gears, and that set of gears, all the way back to uh, this last one interfacing with the one that's actually on the head. Uh, and so that's uh, this set of uh, 1 to 64 step down gears. So basically, for every uh, rotation uh, of the rotor, I only get a 64th turn of the actual motor shaft. Uh, and that's going to give you a much finer resolution, albeit a lower speed, uh, as you uh, work with this motor here. Uh, but once I've got into that, I can actually remove that set of gears. I can just grab these tabs over here on the side uh, that are holding on to the plate with the gears on it. And just kind of work that out. There we go. And inside there, then, uh, you can see... Oops, sorry. Got that uh, all messed up there. Uh, but there's actually a, just a metal plate. Now, actually sitting in the middle of there, though, is the rotor. That's just a little permanent magnet rotor. I can actually pull that out, and uh, you can see the permanent magnet sort of wrapped around uh, this plastic rotor here. Uh, so there's my rotor. Let me take that and set it aside. Uh, and then inside there is actually a, a set of plates uh, with little metal teeth in it. And those are around uh, the coils. So the co coils are hidden inside uh, between those uh, platters of, of teeth, if you will, right? So I can actually start to pull those plates out. So let me just uh, get in there with my uh, pliers there and see if I can work that top metal plate out. There it comes. Awesome. So this is just a, a metal plate, and you'll notice that it's got eight little teeth uh, pointing up off of it. So it's these teeth that actually help to attract uh, that rotor. Uh, and in fact, if you look on the rotor, there's even uh, some marks, some little red marks on there uh, that I believe should be indicating the north and south poles uh, across its axis there. So anyhow, as these teeth get energized uh, magnetically, they start to attract that motor. And as, again, you look down inside that, you'll see that there's just three more sets of teeth. Now, those teeth are actually uh, on little platters buried between the coils. So let me pull this out of here and just see if I can remove the coils. There they come. And you'll notice that there's actually two coils here. Uh, and in between them are more little metal plates. Now, I've actually taken another motor apart already, uh, so I can show you that those metal plates are just these. They look very much like the top ones there. In fact, that, that is an actual top one. There you go. Uh, there's just these other metal plates, and you, they get stacked in between, one coil above, one coil below, one set of teeth pointing up, one set of teeth pointing down. So that gets me eight teeth on the top, another 16 teeth here, and then on the very bottom uh, is yet another set of teeth that are in there. So it gives me a total of 32 teeth. 
uh, that are in there. And that's basically going to mean that if I align that motor or that rotor, I should say, with each one of those 32 teeth progressively, it would take 32 of those steps, if you will, to bring that rotor one full rotation. Right? Now that would be with a regular full step driving. If I were to use half step, that would get me 64 turns uh, or steps uh, to a single revolution of that motor. Now remember, that's just the rotor within the teeth. That's not uh, including the 1 to 64 step down gears that we have in here. So uh, those are going to give me even finer resolution. And that means at full stepping, I'm going to get 8 steps per, or sorry, 32 steps per revolution uh, times. Uh, 64 of those to go one full revolution of the of the outer gear shaft and that's going to give me 2048 steps per revolution with the gears if I go to half stepping I double that and I go up to 4096 steps per revolution so you get very precise control with this uh, and at a very in extreme uh, or inexpensive price pretty cool all right, so that's really what's going inside of there. If I look at the coils, uh, this is a unipolar stepper motor. Uh, and in fact, you can look inside there and you can see that there's some wires coming off. Uh, I get one wire coming off of this pin here. And then there's actually two wires. These are really the center tap of a coil. And then another one connected there. And then I have a similar set going into this lower level of pins. And those are what come out to these different colored uh, wires here that end up getting plugged into my driver board. So if we actually looked inside those, those coils, this is a, a unipolar stepper motor. And so I didn't have exact colors. You got orange and pink and yellow and blue. I know the pink and the yellow are a little bit off, right? But if you look at one of those sets of, of coils here, uh, imagine that leftmost wire there uh, would be, for example, this one, and then it goes through the coil, and then we pull that center tap off, and we actually go out to the red wire, and then we just continue that coil. So that's why it loops right back out, continues coiling around, and then ends up on the pink wire uh, out here is the other end of that coil. Uh, and so what we can basically do then as we're driving this is send current either this way through the coil or that way. Uh, through the coil uh, and that's going to give us different magnetic poles across that coil of either north and south to help us attract uh, the different poles on our rotor in there uh, and also because we're never uh, you know, we always connect this guy up to ground, and we always connect this guy up to a voltage uh, we don't have to play around with any uh, logic or any circuitry like an H-bridge or something to reverse the polarities we just either send current that way or we send it that way uh, through those different coils so we can hook this up to sort of a, a standard set of transistors like a Darlington array uh, to just go in and drive those coils so anyhow, that's sort of what's going on inside there, and I could actually take this now and reassemble this motor. Get that top plate back on it. Get the gearbox in. Oh, the rotor. Let's not forget that. Kind of an important piece, huh? Get the gearbox back in. There we go. And finally, I could drop the shaft back on. All right. And at that point, I could actually go out and drive this if I wanted to. And in fact, I'll do that in the subsequent video.